Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have with us our guest. She's here in the studio and we're going to be looking at a bit of, you know, brand consultancy, image management, not just for entertainers, but also for people that are in uh, the industry, entertainment, entertainers, stars, music artists, actors, and the likes of them. Now, today with us, our guest is the head PR team and founder of Mike Check Entertainment and Media. She's also with 10 years background in broadcasting, PR expert, and she's also, she uses art, entertainment, and media to help local and global brands to tell their cooperative and executive individual narratives. Our guest today is Cynthia Odibili. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh, I'm you're really so pleasant. You. Are you always you happy? Yes, I'm always this happy. Oh, so sweet. Well, not always this happy. I, I get crazy when there's a deadline. Or is it meet. because, you know, this is first week of the new month, so lots of people <laughs> salaries? <laughs> you know. Absolutely not. It's just excitement to be here. I'm okay. just talking to you guys. All right, Cynthia, let's start the conversation looking at our initial story. We started today's show looking at R. Kelly and mm -hmm. his response to, you know, the allegations that have been leveled against him. If you were R. Kelly's publicist, what would you do? Bearing in mind that, you know, I, I had asked T.G. Banks that, what if his publicist had told him to keep mom all along? So for the past 18 months, you know, they've been, these mm -hmm. stories have been going mm -hmm. back and forth and he said nothing about it. What if his publicist told him to keep mom? So if you were his publicist? If I were our Kelly's publicist, I'm not sure would have let it get this deep. Like you said, it's been 18 months. I've been following the stories back to back. Why didn't he come out say anything? Even if it was just an article, you know, not, nothing personal now, just articles spread out there on publications. There would have been one or two editors, publishers willing to snag up the story and, you know, blow it out. Uh, but, of course, um, just looking at it, all I think now is that empathy, compassion, you know, a little bit of sympathy should be thrown at R. Kelly. You know how the media can bite you and drag you down. So I think that he deserves a bit of empathy. Why would look deeply into the stories to be sure that they are facts for real? But if I were R. Kelly's um, publicist, I said now the damage has been done a bit more. So it's about damage, repair, you know, churning out articles here and there probably doing a bit more social work, you know, trying to garner compassion, you know, getting him to do nice things, a little bit of the um, social life and celebrity life toned down, you know, more humanitarian stuff out there, compassion. He All he needs now is compassion from that society. So a lot of all um, these compassionate things should be done by his publicists. And perhaps while they're still looking into these cases, who knows? He might be free of all the allegations. So looking at how damaged Robert's brand is right now, what are the things uh, anybody, celebrity, somebody in the corporate world, or anyone you know that is in, that has a brand, what are the things they should look out for when it comes to branding? Um, it's important that you take your craft seriously. Narrowing it down to Nigeria, I meet a lot of these um, artists or celebrities who don't realize how important what you're doing is and all of the things like contracts signs looking intently into it branding who are you on your team all those things are important so as regards branding it's important that your personal brand my it's an it's a strong ethos of your work values like transparency, honesty. So if you say that you're going for a show, please make sure that you get to the show five minutes earlier as opposed to 30 minutes late. All of those things are important in creating a personal brand, you know, about you that would after long spread out there, which is what public relations is anyways. It's word of mouth, publicity, traction, who's talking about you, mm -hmm. what do people know about your brand, so make sure that your work ethics are strong. Make sure that your personal branding in terms of your image is right. And the rest, they say, is history. So I'm going to ask you a twofold question. Question with regards to, you know, I like to ask every publicist I meet this particular question. Okay. You know, they say <laughs> all publicity is good publicity. Mm -hmm. So what's your take? Do you believe all publicity? Because we know there are people that sort of throw out information about themselves, negative information, stories that we know that isn't true just because they want to get, because we know that bad news spreads faster, mm -hmm. so they want to get people talking. Absolutely. So are you of the view that all publicity all, is all good publicity? publicity? All publicity is good publicity until someone is hurt. Okay, so if somebody's going to get hurt, if somebody's going to get... Um, physically in, or emotionally? Emotionally or, or physically hurt. I don't think that's good enough 
you know, just for the sake of publicity. After all, it's just publicity at the end of the day. But so it's important that you know that in all of your pranks, nobody's getting hurt. People are not getting swayed or creating a movement to start a riot. Mm. You know, you best be careful what you're churning out there. All right. So the spin-off, you know, the second part of my question <laughs> from that would be in reference to something that happened on social media like two know. weeks ago. Um, so <laughs> the one I'm referring to first was Shay Law and his wife. Oh, you know, my Saying goodness. that his marriage was, quote-unquote, parting ways. It was a play of words, you know. And uh, right after that, we had Two-Face and Annie Idibia. So... What, at what point do you draw the line with publicity stunts? It's, I think it's imperative that people, these people know that there are people who actually look up to them. Um, so you must be very careful in terms of the information that you churn out there. So um, having said that, people make mistakes. Can we move on is what I'll say. Uh, lessons have been learned. Uh, there must be barriers, okay, when you're, tr it's not April Fool's Day, that could have passed for an April Fool mm. joke, you know, but then it's everyday regular life, people are trying to get busy following you for trends, following you for um, inspiration, they don't want to come on your page and know that they can't trust you with the information you churn out, so mm. I think this is, that's a cue for other people to follow, it's important you safeguard the information that leaves your parameters or your platform. Okay, so every time something bad happens to a, a person or a brand, for example, there's always that part where the publicist talks about damage control. Now, how far can damage control go for anybody? Sometimes we've had people do damage control and then, you know, they just go, ah, let's take it all the way out, let's settle. And then sometimes the so-called damage control turns out being a problem. So, for example... Let's take MJ's case, for example. There were times where we had, we had um, out-of-court settlements that were now used as evidence in the court case later. Is it okay as a PR person to just, okay, let's take the easy way out that could likely lead to problem later, or you could do that and still tidy up? Is it okay? I, I think, first of all, as a PR expert, it's important that you are very transparent and very matter-of-factly with whoever your client is. Okay, so I'm not going to damage control every damn thing you do. So tidy up your in-house. Make sure if you're working with corporates, make sure your staff, you know, is diligent, customer service is tip top notch, you know, all of those things. So it's easier when you're, you're trying to control damage from an organization or an individual that has it, you know, up to a certain par, as opposed to, you know, trying to uh, control every damage from people or organizations who aren't trying to, you know, match up to a certain level for the people that they work with or whether for the people that um, patronize them. So I'll use my, okay, I've been asked not to name calls, but there's an international food brand and something happened within their, one of their stores. So one of their staff who was tired of the job took a hamburger and spat into it and made a video of it and posted it on YouTube. Mm. Now this video garnered millions of views. Immediately, there was the public, uh, PR team, you know, ready with an article to battle this. They were able to cash in on it immediately and save the, uh, save the day. Okay. So it's important that before, as a PR expert, before you work with any organization or an, an individual, you already have damage control uh, articles mm. in preparation for what's coming because you never know it might just spring up on you mm. so it's okay to tie up all the loose ends. what could possibly you're working with a brand you know their weaknesses for god's sake what could possibly go wrong in working with these people let's tie this down here let's tie this down here so you are armed when you're faced with situations. So literally, people are the only... I don't know if you ever saw... <laughs> Olivia Pope Yes, you're the scandal. Olivia Pope. You're the, scan, <laughs> you're the fixer of your clients at the end of the day. Absolutely. Do you ever have to... We know that legally, you know, sometimes you, you're, not, you're not really allowed to choose your clients. If you're working with a firm, you can... You're defending the person, whether they're guilty or not. Mm -hmm. And if the person's your client, you're defending them. Is it the same thing with PR? Will you still defend the person even though even though you know if, would you still put out statements in support of a person or helping a person clear their name even though you know that what they're being the information out there is true and damaging to their reputation 
Uh, well, within the confines of your contract, you have no other uh, option but to follow the due process, which is representing your client. Uh, but of course, if it's going to damage your own personality and um, integrity as a PR agent, it's okay to call for reviews of contract and say, hey, we can no longer work with you. We're willing to pull out. Okay. As simple as that. Even How? if it would cost you a trial in court, like a court case uh, from your client? I, I don't know any uh, court that holds you against pulling out of an almost due contract, mm. or, you know, or uh, calling for a review of contract, as the case may be. All right. So we know that. I, sh I should ask you, how important is it to work with a publicist? Who are the categories of people that need a publicist? I would say PR is as important as the air every organization or executive individual breathes. Um, if you're not involved in any sort of PR, you're like a man in the dark winking and nobody can see you. So it's important. Uh, I always meet businesses that say, oh, we didn't budget for PR. And I say, but you did budget for staff. You did budget for store or office space, as the case may be. So you should have been at the background of things when you were budgeting for, you know, all of these other things that public relations or media relations, as the case may be, was supposed to be in the budget as well. So it's very key. It's of utmost importance that every brand or organization should work with a publicist or a PR expert. Very, very key. And I'll tell you why it's key. It's key because you're not going to tell your story as good as someone else will tell mm. your story for you. Uh, you don't have the contacts that these organizations or these agencies have. Mm. Uh, you don't know the publishers that they know. You don't know the influencers in your industry because for every industry, there are influencers. So there are influencers in Nigeria for technology. There are influencers for fashion, for beauty, as the case may be, whatever sector you are in. You don't know the influencers that these agencies know. So you do need a publicist at least to a certain level where you feel that you can now. But, I mean, I always say that it's they are the biggest brands, name it. They still do publicity here and there and advertising here and there. So public relations is as key as any of the sectors. So what about costing? So some people have always said this thing of, oh, I feel it's the big brands and the big organizations that can afford PR. That's why they have them. Now, there's, what about small SMEs, for example? Mm. They're, they're SMEs that are actually doing well right now. So Absolutely. They are growing bigger than SMEs. Mm -hmm. So now we're asking, how affordable is PR? <sighs> I, I do know a senior colleague that will say public relations is not luxury, but I'm going to use myself as an example. We started out working with SMEs, and for me, it was first empathy. All oh, these brands, they really need to get their name out there. You know? So if you find a good agency that is willing to look into a reasonable budget with you, I say you're in for a blessed time. Uh, so it's important. Uh, I'm not, not putting uh, price to what PR is worth, because it's worth more, mm. you know, in terms of what you get at the end of the day. But it's important that you find an agency, like I said, that's willing to work with you on whatever your budget is. Hopefully, mm. it's enough, you know, to do enough strategies out there, strategies in television, radio, uh, print, um, online, digital online. You know, there are things that you can pick out. For every agency, they have bouquets, you know, mm. so uh, this is what you can afford and this is what you can't afford. This is what we should insert. This is what your uh, organization needs, and this is what you don't need. At the end of the day, I'm sure that you can have something substantial to your brand name. All right. Now, I'm going to come back to entertainment and celebrities. We know that as a business, every time you have something negative said about your brand, it's a mm -hmm. problem, and you have to answer. You have to tackle. Mm -hmm. However, celebrities are often told that you don't have to answer everything that, that is said at you. Because in their comment section, you're seeing a lot of hate and a lot of nasty comments being thrown at them. Mm -hmm. And if you're one that responds to everything, they're going to just say this one, you're going to savage wahala is too much. Can you mm -hmm. relax every time savage, savage, savage mm -hmm. much? Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's social media language. How do you decide as an entertainer, as an influencer, as a celebrity, how do you decide what to respond to and what to ignore? Because we find that when you ignore some things, over time, people no longer talk about it again. So how do you decide what to respond to and what to ignore? Um, you do realize that um, celebrities are actually 
new media as they are called so it means that your platform is strong enough for a brand to say hey we're going to work with the celebrity for a tenure of one year six months two years five years depending on the contract that you're able to come to agreement on so it's important first of all it's where the money is like they say secure the bag that whatever it is that has been is being said if looked into you know would ultimately affect your contract or your possible future contract with any brand is addressed immediately like i say immediately so uh let's say for example uh you were accused of calling women horrible because they had saggy boobs okay so what that means is that you're most likely not going to be approached by say a beauty brand mm. um look at the you know the ripple effect is brands within that area of your um what's it what's the word now of, of, of the, your of your, the conflict that you've been found in will not find you approachable so it's important that you, uh, especially if these are allegations and they have not been proven, it's important that you deal with them head on just because you want to secure the bag, which is current contract or possible future contract with wow, brands. That has been an, I feel like I just left a PR class, <laughs> a really extensive one. If I have Thank other questions you. You know, that we can't ans ask, answer here, how can people ask you on social media? Uh, I think you can follow me on the instagram at c or Dibili. i'm willing to always talk to brands it's very important for me that brands get it right when it comes to pr and first of all branding before pr all right so at c e underscore or Dibili. c e e o d i b e l i all right thank, thank you, you so much for joining us thank you olive to enjoy more of this our ugonke videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page you go love her